Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Chat, a no holds barred, anything goes video cast about everything and anything gaming related. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hello everyone, good morning, and welcome to Dice Commando in the Commando Chat. I'm Andrew with you here as always, and what I wanted to talk about this morning was you know, the, the huge news that came out this week about all of the Star Wars miniatures games and lines moving from Fantasy Flight Games, we just had them for a long time, over to Atomic Mass Games, who's notably the manufacturer of my Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, so I wanted to, you know, it's not it's not breaking news, it's been out for about a week, but I wanted to kind of sit down after we'd had time to kind of process and collect the data, really talk about kind of my thoughts and analysis on it, where I think we're going to go, and, and what it could mean, and just kind of the, the why, what, and when. Hey guys, so thanks for tuning in this morning. You'll have to excuse the exceedingly loud top. I was all set to go for my run this morning, and I went outside, and it's like foggy and cold, which, I mean, it's November, so, you know, no surprise there, but I decided I'd come in and let it warm up a bit first, so that's why I'm in my exceedingly loud and reflective uh, running gear. So as far as today's cast, right, talking about really kind of everything going on with this move, um, this could be a long cast. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this goes. I have a bunch of notes down, um, but you know, the the thing to remember, I think, for this is that you know, everybody has an opinion, and a lot of it's driven by fear and worry that people's games that they love are going to go away. Um, everybody inherently fears change always, but I mean, let's I mean, let's be realistic. Changes like even if FFG had had it, I mean, we just got the Legion 2.0, quote unquote released this week that changed a lot of things. Um, many, I think, for the better, of course, but, you know, it changes something that's in all of these games. So I just kind of wanted to go through, hopefully I can be somewhat coherent as I go through this, but I, you know, you guys know me, I'm sure I'll drift a little bit. So yeah, this this hopefully won't be too long, but we'll see. Uh, certainly me ranting about how long it's going to be is not helping. So let's just get right into it. So, uh, you know, like I, said, like I said, the news has been out for about a week. Um, I can, you know, put up a shot of the press conference, but I think, think the majority, if you clicked on this, you probably already know what's happening, right? So X-Wing, which is, I mean, X-Wing's been out for a long time. It's a huge cash cow. I mean, it's doing quite well in terms of miniature sales. It's hugely popular, lots of people. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that one moving over, is, but, you know, they're moving all of their miniatures over to Atomic Mass. Um, you know, so Atomic Mass, I, I don't know much about them, so I've had to go out and kind of research it. So it does appear they're out of Seattle, right? That's where the original press release came out of. So their only game right now is Marvel Crisis Protocol. Now, they they, they seem to be doing a very good job with it. Um, their release schedule has been very aggressive. But you need to remember, right, that's their only focus. And Marvel, if you really think about it, right, it's not like Marvel is a hugely evolving IP in terms of new characters and stuff, right? And when I when I refer to that, what I mean is like, the Mandalorian, for example, is introducing new characters or, or has a potential to introduce new characters on a relatively frequent basis, right? So to expect any studio to turn stuff around on a new IP like that really very quickly, especially with like miniatures and all that, is not really feasible. Um, so kind of to that regard, as we go into kind of the IP discussion, which I have in my notes, remember that... Um, you know, they may do a sculpt or something in terms of, like, a new character for, for Marvel, I mean. But, you know, the, the, they've known who the Marvel characters are for, for a long time in some form or another, right? So they, you know, it's, it, let's say this game's been in the pipeline, the Crisis Protocol's been in the pipeline for several years. They've had the advantage of being able to keep that aggressive release schedule because they, you know, even before the game was released, they, in theory, had all this stuff in the pipeline. 
I don't want to take away anything from them because, you know, my, my first bullet here is that's one of the things that uh, I'm, I, I'm personally, I, I, I think that when I first heard this, I was like, okay, this could be a good thing because, you know, we could get a more aggressive release schedule for Legion. Um, and that, cause that's how it affects me for, for all these games. Right. And, um, so let, let's, you know, talk about FFG, uh, for a second, right. In terms of kind of like, why would Asmodee really go in and what, why would they do this? Right. I mean, their, their argument is, well, it's just restructuring. It's for efficiency. And right. If, if you look at this from the outside, you're like, well, of course, you know, corporate efficiency restructuring, it makes it sense to put it all in the same place. Um, and, and it does, but then you also have the factor of the fact that they went in and released a lot of the game designers and stuff, right? So that's that's why those, you know, if it was just a restructuring effort and they didn't want to double dip, you would expect the teams to move over and then you'd have those people a trit out over time. They wouldn't just drop the hammer and kind of clean house and do it all at once. So I do think there's something else going on here. Um, so, the, you know, the the short-term impacts are probably little... The short-term impacts of this moving over to Crisis, or to Atomic Mass, excuse me, are probably not huge, right? I mean, we're still going to get the releases that they promised. What I am worried about is... Basically, think about this, right? There's a lot of products in FFG, like the, the Phase 2 clones, the ARC Troopers, uh, you know, the B2 Battle Droids. Those are just the, some of the more recent ones that they were relatively short run that are out i don't know i mean obviously all of the money filters up somehow the sales filters up somehow to asmodee but if you really think about it because these are sub companies like what is fantasy flights mode like i, I don't know where's the money going to go right if this was a product that ffg produced but then they do a second run of it you know is it ffg like does all the stuff that are on the boat right now does that go to ffg versus atomic mass right so that, that's a very interesting discussion that matters because from the reese print run like if they short ran something like it's potential it's highly potential that there are people at ffg or who aren't there anymore right but the people left at ffg have virtually no motivation to support stuff that's already in the pipeline promote stuff that's already in the pipeline or even go back and fix it like they just don't have the motivation it's not that asthma day is not paid right it's not that you know in the end all the money doesn't go to the same place but you have individual people who are getting bonuses based on stuff based on what company they report to so like it could certainly can certainly affect their motivation right i mean we'll have to see if that pounds out or not but that's one of the concerns i have right you know i still think that all the stuff that's been promised is going to come on relatively accurate timeline there will likely be a slight lull. I mean, I, I think it would make sense that there'll be a slight lull, you know, six, eight months from now, kind of as the fallout from this transition. But I really do hope that a lot of the backlog stuff, like uh, the Phase 2 and the B2s, actually, I, I've heard, are actually restocking soon. But, you know, maybe the ARC Troopers, maybe that's a more relevant. I mean, you know, I mean, you know Legion or uh, Maul and Anakin were showed up on allocation, right? They hadn't even come out, and they were on allocation. So, like... Is that just the end for those guys? Because Atomic Mass doesn't care because it wasn't their product. Fantasy Flight doesn't care because it's not their product anymore, right? I don't know. So that that could totally be uh, something there. So in terms of gameplay changes, I, I mean, I don't think we can speculate on that. I mean, certainly... So, okay, so let's let's actually skip. Because what I was going to say is certainly getting rid of the designers, or at least some portion of the design team, implies... It implies that Asmodee wasn't happy with the way the game was being run. Now, do I personally think that Asmodee as the corporation, as the company, cares about how the game was being developed? No, I don't. Not not largely. What I think largely, FFG... Th there's two things that I think FFG has really screwed the pooch on across all of their um, miniatures games. Right? And again, I, I'm not a huge Armada guy, but you, know, look at the, you look at the Armada release schedule and it was basically not present for a while um there, there's two things that i think ffg is really screwed up the first is that they don't seem to have a very good handle on how much product they need right and I, i've heard a lot of I, I think the best argument i've heard out there is ffg runs their minis games like a board game in terms of product and it just doesn't work because people go buy one board game and people are buying multiple units now, i think that's somewhat fair 
But I, I think FFG just as a company, we've seen time and time again, no matter what game it is, that FFG would rather print a thousand units and sell a thousand units and have a demand left over for 200 than they would to print 1500 and have 200 sitting in a warehouse, right? They would rather not, I mean, this is my interpretation of their company plan. They would rather not realize money than have money left on the shelf. I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment of the company, right? So the, the there, there's, and the, there's an effect of this from really just a manufacturing standpoint, right? So let's say, I mean, let's even use the argument because this, this has been a discussion I've heard out there about this is, well, it doesn't matter if it moves over to, because everyone's like, well, when it moves over to AMG, it'll help them, you know, consolidate their product lines. And like, it is highly likely that Asmodee is probably sourcing all of their stuff through relatively the same factories anyway. Um, I mean, that may not be the case, but it's highly likely that they have the same supply chain access. So I don't know that this is going to change much in terms of that. What it will change though, because like I said, with FFG doing a relatively poor job forecasting their demand, like let's say it takes 10 minutes of fact, I don't know, but like let's say it takes 10 minutes of factory time to produce a sprue. Okay, you can produce as many sprues as you have time and you say, okay, I have a demand of a million sprues, so it's going to take me that much time. But then there's a retooling time, right? You, you have to take your factory line down or whatever to retool to make the next sprue. And so even though, right, it doesn't matter whether they make those million sprues today or farther down the line, if they only forecast 500,000 and then they need to come back and make another 500,000, they do lose that tooling time right? So I, I do think that there's an impact here, and I, I, can, I can imagine that Asmodee, if they're running constrained factory time, right? I can imagine that factory, uh, Asmodee as a corporation would be very frustrated at FFG continually having to come back and make reorders, because it screws up their schedules for it, it screws up their schedules for other games and other impacts as well, plus there's an overall loss time, and, and I mean, I doubt they own the factory, so there are certainly costs associated with that with, with the retool. So I, I do think that that's a relatively, I, I think it's a relatively reasonable consideration on why they would want to consolidate, um, not just from the actual factory availability, but from actually a product planning standpoint. So that's, that's a thought I have there as a, as a manufacturing guy myself, is getting those forecast numbers right not only affects the total usage time, but also, you know, the kind of the product planning. And I think FFG's continually failed at that, so if they can kick it over to Atomic Mass, who they think at least is doing it better. Now again, you have the argument there that Atomic Mass is, they only have one game, and they've, in theory, had their release plan out for it even before they started selling stuff, so we'll have to see how that goes. But, I mean, logistics is logistics, um, and planning is planning. So, the, the next thing, and this is where I really think FFG's dropped the ball, quote-unquote. If you look at quote unquote time to market for some of the Star Wars IPs, I think FFG's really failed there. And, and this is why I think that the designers took a hit as well, is because there's like, we're two years in ish on The Mandalorian, right? And we don't have Mandalorian stuff across any of the Star Wars minis lines. Now, there's a theory there and like, okay, well, it takes time to develop the game, develop the mini, or, you know, develop develop the product within game, test it. Um, and, and that's all perfectly valid, but I could see, again, why the corporate structure of Asmodee is like, look, we have this IP and it's taking you guys two to three years to capitalize on said individual IPs. And we know that Disney likes to have all of its IPs represented in the, or a, a larger portion of its IPs represented in these games. So I can very much see why, again, Asmodee as a corporation is like, you're not taking full advantage of what we're paying for in this license. We need a faster time to market. And when I look at Marvel Crisis Protocol, they seem to have a better handle on, because of the way that they release their stuff, they seem to, and again, it's, that's game specific, I grant you that, but they seem to have a better handle on kind of a more rapid fire approach. So I could very much see that from an Asmodee corporate standpoint, why they don't. I mean, FFG is pretty slow with their stuff. And let's let's actually take a site, right? So again, you you guys know Legion is my my main vehicle. 
from the mini standpoint. I, I see all the time when I'm watching other content creators' podcasts or, or video casts or whatever, they'll be like, oh man, here's the people I would like to see, here are the characters I'd like to see. And in the comments, it's always like crazy town, right? These people are pulling like obscure, they're like, oh, I want, you know, the Cantina Band or something like that, right? And like, if you were to make a list of like the next hundred characters we're going to see in Star Wars Legion, they're like 98 and 99. And if you look at the current product release schedule uh, or format of Star Wars Legions, like we're looking at like two to three years down the line of an aggressive release schedule before someone would even think about getting to some of these obscure characters, right? So without a more aggressive release schedule, you're not going to get advantage of the Star Wars IP. Now, the obvious counter to my statement there is like, well, they have to test it and not about break the game, and you're 100% correct. I'm not arguing with that at all, right? But, you know, if you look at, I, I, th I think if you look at Legion, I think they probably should have just made more operatives and commanders, right? I mean, they don't need to go with the units as much, but like, they released Anakin without Ahsoka. Like, that was just dumb, right? They, I mean, just why not sell it? And I mean, there's, I, I think that they can take a little more risk. And from a asthma day corporate standpoint, like, people would have bought Anakin and Ahsoka side by side if they were in the same wave and they would have basically doubled their money, right? And I realize there's a testing component to that, there's the whatever gameplay component of that. But if you're the corporate entity, you want to get more of that name stuff out so people are buying it. So that is why, you know, I, I think there's definitely a philosophy problem, quote unquote, from that aspect at FFG in terms of, you know, protecting the gameplay versus going from a, you know, sales standpoint. And, you know, if I'm thinking about it from a core, I'm not saying that that's wrong. Or right. I'm not saying that that's wrong. Like, I, I understand protecting the game and I enjoy the fact that there's a little more tempered release schedule from my own personal pocketbook. But I think you can certainly understand why, if you're the corporate overlords, why you would want a more aggressive release schedule. So I think those two things definitely fit into it. I mean, and, you know, like I said with Mandalorian, like, I, I don't personally care if there's Mandalorian stuff in there or not, but, like, Disney probably does. Like, it, it just doesn't, you know, there should be Mandalorian stuff out there by now. Like, it's been two years, and we've kn we knew Mandalorian was coming out before Mandalorian came out. So, like, there's been enough time for them to... They could have even, like, you see, like, Legion has Agent Callus coming out in Lando. Like, they could have just retooled the game stuff. And, I mean, like I said, I, I don't care one way or the other, but it's just very odd that we don't have very popular IPs out there right now that could help them with sales. And there's no way the corporate overlords aren't really looking at that. All right. So um, the other argument, or not argument, the other point of discussion here, sorry, let me flip pages because I had a couple... But it is possible, you know, there were rumors out there, I think it's hard to keep track of things in gaming anymore because everything moves fast, especially in COVID world. Um, but I think it was, you know, a year and a half ago, there were rumors that FFG was, Asmodee was looking to sell FFG as a corporate entity, right? So it is possible that there, you know, we already saw the RPG movement out of FFG. We're now seeing this out of FFG. It's completely 100% possible that Asmodee's carving FFG up to sell it. I mean, I, I don't, you know, you guys know I don't have a lot of love for FFG. I think that they make a lot of poor decisions, and I don't think they respect their gamers very much. Not that I think Asmodee respects their gamers either. Um, but, um, you know, I, I could see Asmodee wanting to drop FFG, because FFG seems to have this answer that's like, well, we're a board game company, that's what we like to do. Anything else, we'll do it, but it's really hard, and we don't like to do it. And we're kind of kind of pout about it. So I could very much see out in the days, like, all right, tell you what, we're going to take all the stuff that we actually care about and try to make money on, and we're going to just chop you up and sell you. So, I mean, I, and I don't know, I, I, I really don't know how that fits in, but it is something. Um, I don't know, it's just, I, I think there's a lot in these games that FFG's not, hadn't, FFG hadn't been, because they don't have any more, but I think there's a lot uh, left on the table that FFG hadn't been utilizing, and I think probably i mean that that's kind of my take i know i keep coming back to this is like it wasn't just that they took the lines and moved them for consolidation like there was very something there was something else going on here otherwise you wouldn't have killed all the designers too and by the killed i mean you know got rid of their job roles um which is you know unfortunate like i i can't imagine being someone who helps like develop these games as a baby and you've owned it for basically your you know entire recent professional career and all of a sudden you were just told no uh, likely when a lot of the stuff you were getting 
moved on for or passed over for likely wasn't your fault. Um, and it, that really sucks. And, you know, I can't forget the fact that these are people too, but I'm just trying to analyze why this happened because it doesn't make a whole bunch of sense on the surface other than just the arguments that, well, it's consolidation and all that, right? But if it's just consolidation, there's like, you wouldn't have done it the way you did it, I don't think. Um, so I guess that's that's where I stand now. What, you know, what what's going to happen in the future? I, I don't know. I mean, we, we you know we saw the Q and A article come up from Asmodee or sorry from AMG, where they're like, yeah, change is going to happen. I mean, we all knew that change is going to happen in some way. I don't think you know. There's been a lot of people out there who's like, well, in the short term, it's just going to be a rebranding of the boxes, and that's that's probably true for the short short term. I think in the long term, there's going to be changes. I, I I personally think that in Legion, for example, I think we're going to see a higher rate of commanders and operatives because then they can get more named people in the game, which will help them help them sell more stuff, right? Because um, you know, at some point, how many rebel troopers do you need, right? How, you, how many core units do you need? I mean, the, you have them and you have them, right? The way to turn over and really provide options is to provide options in terms of the characters that people want to play. I mean, people will own three or four commanders because then they can change their army up by based on how the commander works. And that'll help, right? So, again, you have to test balance and you have to test it, but, like, we've seen that they can push out a product and then errata it. I mean, that's probably more of the structure that I foresee them going to. So I I do think that long-term you're going to see, hopefully, hopefully a more aggressive release schedule um, that's not necessarily great for our pocketbooks, but it is great for you know the sustained sales health of the game, which which is relevant. Um, you know the the fears out there, of course, is that they just kill Legion and or or I mean I doubt they kill X Wing or Legion. I mean they're not going to kill them, but like they could get complete overhauls. Armada, if I was an Armada player, I'd probably be pretty nervous, uh, despite the fact they just had the Clone Wars expansions released or are releasing soon one of the two um i'd probably be nervous there and then there's talk of course of this new game you know a, a new star wars game i would have to say you know i think there's a lot, there's a lot of people there was like oh man we're gonna have massive scale galactic battles and stuff and like i don't think that's right i think what you're more likely to see is like a short 20 to 30 minute you know man on man type smaller game where you have you know four or five miniatures and they're fighting four or five miniatures on the other side, uh, you know, that because you have a Luke, you have Vader, all of your heroes, right? And then, you know, it's kind of like more of a pro, like if you could have more Star Wars Crisis Protocol, like I think that would be pretty popular. Like I do. I mean, you could get all your guys, all your big guys that you like, you paint them, you throw them and battle each other. I mean, I think that's more than likely it. Because people can, in theory, get into that for $100 as opposed to like looking up $500 or something like that. And I, you can sell starters, people can play it out of the box, and I think that's just more likely where we're going. The problem is if, if that comes in, like I, I think I think Legion's most at risk of getting com- competed with or whatever. Right? I think a Legion's most at risk. Anyway, maybe they do a you know Star Wars Legion skirmishes or something like that, in which case you can use the same models. I personally don't see why if they're making a new game they would do that because then they're not maximizing their sales. Uh, but it could happen. Um, I don't know. That's uh, I think I think that's highly likely that what we see is some sort of like character level skirmish battle. I don't I don't know specifically what you would call it, but basically I think Star Wars Crisis Protocol. I mean I, I think that's highly likely it's an, it's a model that's pretty successful. I mean, why wouldn't they do that and just switch the license or, you know, hop licenses? I, I think that makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, I understand why there's fear. I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, nobody likes change, but I mean, when I first heard it, I have to admit I was a little excited until I, well, when I first started on Monday, I was really excited. Then when we started finding out that a lot of the people had gotten fired, I was very worried. And then, you know, I've kind of had time to digest this and really think about it. And then you saw the Legion 2.0 on Friday, which I got very excited about. But, you know, there was it was funny. There was a mistake. There's a mistake in that Holocron, right? B2s are listed twice, and there's nobody there to fix it anymore, right? The guys who kicked out the Holocron don't work at the company anymore. So, I mean, that's going to cause problems, at least in the short 
near to short term, right? So, you know, I think at this point I've kind of hit all of my discussion points. Um, but I, you know, I think there's every reason to be nervous about the games that you care about because there are going to be changes. Not are those, are those changes going to be something we care about? I, I don't know. Um, but I'd have to say that within you know one to two years we're going to start probably eight. I, I would say that based on the you know announcements and stuff probably we'll start to see some of the impacts of the game specific changes probably within eight months and then start seeing those products maybe you know next next christmas maybe start to hit in the stores and then we'll we'll, we'll see but you know I, I don't think it would be a bad remember remember in these games you don't have to buy everything right so having a more aggressive release schedule i don't think hurts anything and it just gives us more variety and it gives a lot you know it gives us a lot more variety which I think would be good and helps ramp up helps ramp up and remember the more money they make the more likely they are to keep our game going over time so I, I think that all, all in all it will be a benefit for the long term sellability of the game I, I, I have enough confidence that they'll be able to keep the game playable um, what I would like to see is AMG kind of re reach out to the Legion playtesters or next wing playtesters and kind of bring them on board like there's really no information in terms of that stuff yet. I mean, it doesn't. It's only been a week. I grant you that. But you know, there are a lot of people with a lot of experience that they don't even have to pay. But then, yeah, you have to listen to crazy gamer people to give you their opinion, which is probably no fun. Um, but I don't know. Maybe they have kind of a short to long term plan as well already, and they just don't care. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I don't I don't think that in the you know, I don't think there's going to be any serious changes for one to one and a half, one to one and a half years. I think we'll start to see the impact, and then probably within a year after that, we'll see how they react to those changes. And it may involve killing games. I don't know. We'll see what other games hit or announced, which will obviously give us more hints to that. But we'll be able to figure this out as we go. So, I think that's about it with my, you know, discussion points. I, you know, I, I hope that. I, I, it wasn't my intention to sound too negative. Um, I mean, I, I've been very public in the past that I think FFG is a relatively poorly run company. With FFG is a poorly run, FFG has good people. Like that, that's always like it's always been one of the things. Like you almost feel bad for all the good people that work at FFG, right? And granted, they don't work there anymore, and they don't work for Asthma Day anymore, which is really a bummer, um, considering that talent that they have. But I mean, with that talent, they'll land on their feet, right? But that's the thing is like you can dislike FFG as a company without holding it against the physical, you know, the individual employees. Um, but I think FFG as a company was a bad company. And I think that getting it out of them and maybe AMG doesn't do any better. I don't know. Right. But you have to at least try. And I think that if you move it out of the bad company, I think it can only be good in the long run. So I, I'm excited to see where this goes nervous of course with the future because i'm tired of um, quite frankly it's been a bad year for games i enjoy getting killed and changed right so i don't want that to happen but i don't know i, I mean I, I think things are going to be okay in the future right we will have to see um it would be nice to see some op announcements and stuff like that as well but um i guess time time will tell right so Anyway, that's my piece. Thanks for you know keeping me company uh, this morning while I was basically data dumping what we learned over the week, kind of giving my thoughts about it. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about it as well. Again, I know there's a lot of emotion, and we don't really know anything at this point anyway, but it was good to sit down and chat about it. I'd love to chat with you guys about it. Again, I really enjoyed talking with people in the Discord about it and just going back and forth on what people think. So thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Again, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Love to have that conversation. And if nothing else, guys. Go Commando.